Welcome to day 50 of the 90 Day Novel Challenge. My name is Brad Pawkett, and today we're going to talk about the epiphany moment. So you are well into this writing challenge at this point. Right now, as of today, you have 36 writing days left to the end of the challenge, and that takes into account the one day off per week that you're going to take for rest. So hopefully you are making serious progress through your manuscript at this point. And as you've been making that progress through the manuscript, we've been touching upon some of the pivotal plot elements that you're likely to encounter when you might encounter them. And these lessons tend to be a little bit early um, because I want to make sure that you have it before you encounter them. They're not much good if you get to the uh, the episode after having reached that element of the plot. So since you can write out of order, it's definitely possible that you're not yet quite to the epiphany moment, but you should be steadily moving to that point. So the epiphany moment is this place where the character is going to learn a lesson, something is going to dynamically change about the character, and then they're going to implement that change to finally solve the problem for real as they make their way to the climax through the third act. Now, a common question that I get is, what is the difference between the rock bottom moment and the epiphany moment? That's an incredible question. The difference is that at the rock bottom moment, the only real change of the character is the character's level of effort. So at the rock bottom moment, the protagonist, their life has become unbearable, at least, uh, you know, by their own standards, and they have to fight back against the problem that they're facing. But the only thing that changes at that rock bottom moment is the protagonist's level of effort that they're willing to apply in confronting their own problem. They really haven't grown as a person. They haven't developed a lot of the skills, tools, relationships, and things like that that they're going to need in order to actually solve the problem. They've just decided to try. Now, at the epiphany moment, after the second act, here they have collected all of the things that they've done. They've gone through the fire. Um, they've arrived at the other side, and they are ready to finally learn the lesson and become a different person so that it's not just a higher degree of effort they're applying, but they can apply new skills, new uh, new character attributes, new tools, new relationships, whatever it takes to the problem to actually and finally solve the problem. So typically what we see is that that epiphany moment, you know, we're driving the character back down again. Things are getting bad, but ideally we want to achieve some irony where the way in which things get bad, finally activates the protagonist to make that character change, finally activates them to become a different person. And what we often see in the epiphany moment is that there is a character change, like some kind of heart or mind change that is coupled with a practical change. For instance, in a mystery, um, at the epiphany moment, the detective might discover or remember the key piece of evidence that solves the case, but at the same time, they also have an emotional change to be able to rely on other people for help or you know, whatever, the, whatever the detective needed to do to change to become a better person and solve the problem. And once those changes are in place, the protagonist is going to spend the third act implementing that solution, rising through the near miss and finally to the climax. So as you're moving towards that epiphany moment, the important thing to ask yourself is what really bad thing could I make happen to the protagonist that is going to uh, really reaffirm the change that they need to make? That's how we achieve that dramatic irony um, is when we think well through that and find that solution that is going to be just so satisfying to the reader um, as we watch it play out on the page. Keep your eye out for that as you move towards the epiphany moment. And of course, today is a regular writing day. So uh, today is the day to get your butt in the seat and put one hour towards this manuscript. And if you're operating at full speed, you should be able to accomplish 1000 words in that hour. Now, as we've been talking about whether you're getting to that 1000 words or not, um, I want you to spend time evaluating, um, you know, after you finish writing, look back on the hour. You don't have to take a long time. Take one minute and just look back on the hour and say, what can I improve for tomorrow? Is there a way I could have been better prepared? Was there a technological burden that I encountered that I could solve? in the future, um, as well as are there any ways that I can improve my tortoise shell, you know, that I can be really intentional and even ruthless about eliminating distractions from my writing time before they happen. So give that a whirl. Uh, enjoy this writing, because at this point, you 
are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. You are getting there. So don't let off the gas at this point. Um, and until I see you tomorrow, happy writing and be blessed. Thank you.